right guys, welcome back to another episode of Bassaholic 760. Today, I think I'm gonna go over drop shot. I mean, it's probably the most thought of finesse tactic at the end of the day. Now, I've been trying to stick to, uh, to shaky head when I'm running finesse lately, but sometimes you just gotta drop shot. Sometimes you just gotta put it in front of their face. Shaky head's great, don't get me wrong, but um, that puts it on the bottom. Unless you're moving it, then it's really not finesse. So, for now, I'm just trying to get a little bit of height on that bait. These bites that I've been getting, they seem to be somewhat suspended. Even if it's a few feet off the deck, it's still suspended. So for a drop shot, I tend to run a little bit lighter of a leader. I'm probably running 12, 10. You know, if I'm in something where there's no junk whatsoever, then yeah, I'm gonna run like an eight pound test. But this one, I think I'm running a 12 pounder. Yeah, it's 12 pounder. So basically, name of the game, I run a long leader. I'm running anywhere from 12 to 15 feet a leader. Why you might ask? Because drop shot by nature, you're gonna end up snagging. So if I pop off, you know, you make a tight enough knot and it's gonna fail at the knot. So 15 feet, 12 feet, you're gonna have more line so you don't have to keep on tying on leaders every time, you know. I've, I mean, I think I've probably popped off three times on this leader alone and I still got about 10 feet left on it, you know. So essentially you want your line goes to your hook. Now for me, I like to do a text pose setup. So most people when they do their drop shot, you got a, you know, standard drop shot hook face up like that well I don't do that I do a standard EWG maybe a one aught maybe a size one but it's a small EWG hook and the reason for that is I could bury that hook nobody even knows that hooks in there you know I could I could go right over the top of brush piles all day and I'm not gonna get so much as a snag you know so that's why I do that Right now I'm running a, uh, a Robo Worm 6 inch straight tail, uh, Morning Dawn. You know, I'll either do Morning Dawn, your Margarita Mutilator, your MM3, which is another Margarita Mutilator color. Um, but yeah, this one, Morning Dawn, I mean, I've had more success on Morning Dawn for my drop shot than anything. It's, for the most part, a clear pink, almost like a bubble gum, but you got kind of like a shad, kind of blue, pearl kind of glow to it. When it gets underwater you know these things are heavily salted you know so i don't know why they add salt i think it's you know to make them hold on a little longer maybe it carries the scent a little bit better but i don't care whatever they're doing it works don't change the thing guys so after i run my one aught with my worm i'm gonna run anywhere from i mean you could go eight inches 10 inches 12. i mean like myself you can go all the way up to about 16 inches a liter now at the end, I carry a pencil weight, just your standard drop shot weight. I don't use the old ball and chain though, I use a pencil because it comes through that cover a hell of a lot better. It just does. You know, it doesn't snag up when you go through, you know, structure, you know, or your, you know, things that you're pulling that hook through, a lot of times the weight doesn't want to cooperate. So you end up getting stuck right there and guess what? You lose your weight, you know? I know people swear by, you know, just clipping it on. I don't know why, but ever since the beginning when I was running drop shot, I would put a tiny little knot just right there and I would hook my weight just above the knot. Now, some people might say, yeah, you're gonna break off line more, but personally, I don't care. I mean, I'd rather break off line one out of 10 times than lose my drop shot weight, you know, two, three out of 10 times. It just, for me, it makes more sense, you know? So that's what I do. Now you guys might wanna try something different and that's fine, you know, everybody everybody has their own techniques. Everybody has their own little subtle nuances that they do when it comes to presentations or how they tie or, you know, what type of knot they use. Oh yeah, speaking of knot, Palomar knot. Do a Palomar knot and then come back around and bring your leader, your tag end, back through the top of the hook and pull it through. The reason for that is when you're sitting there, that hook is going to stay face up no matter what. 
if you don't bring your your tag in back through that that eyelet you know your hook could be you know this way sideways it could be upside down and everybody knows the best type of hook set you're going to get better success if your hook is faced up at all times now when you bring it back through that's what allows you to have that that positive hook set you know that 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 top side setup you're just if you miss them then it's by chance you know it's not like it's for you doing something wrong that's causing you to miss fish and that's the thing you just keep it simple you know simple one knot ewg or size one six inch robo worm palomar knot all the way to your weight and that's that now i use a spinning setup when it comes to my uh my drop shot i used to use a uh, bait caster but i feel like i couldn't sling that thing nearly as far than if i were to be running a uh a spinning setup so basically just fire that sucker out there let it sink take your time take plenty of time never been a problem if you soak your drop shot it seems like they either hit it on the fall they hit it after you pop when you're on a pause or on a rare occasion they hit it on retrieve but for me personally i don't get much retrieval hits when it comes to my drop shot it's when i stop shaking it that they hit it so you know experiment around with it experiment with your cadence experiment with your you know with your retrieval method you know maybe give it a pop pop pause you know maybe give it a tiny shake then a pause tiny shake tiny shake long pause just switch it up keep experimenting with it eventually you'll find your drop shot method that's going to work best for you i've already found mine and that's what this video is for is not to show you exactly how to work a retrieve because like i said that's all on you it's to show you how to rig it and it's to show you its capabilities and it is a very capable method very capable so personally i have a tendency to kind of go a little too fast when it comes to my drop shot no matter how slow i'm going i could always afford to slow down a little bit more so that's what i'm going to do i mean i'm just gonna i'm not gonna soak it soak it but i am gonna I am going to take a leisurely stroll with it, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be smacking on this thing because you got to think, any kind of shake you do on the rod is going to be amplified underwater. So that being said, give it tiny little shakes, just tiny little shakes. You don't, you know, if you think, you know, doing this, you know, shaking it like that is going to have a good action. Tell me what, if you look underwater, if you were a fish, and you've seen a lure doing this, it doesn't look natural, does it? Now, if you see something sitting there and it maybe has a little, that looks more natural. So, case in point, just let it chill. Take your sweet time with it. You know, if you even have to just dead stick that thing, so be it. I mean, I've caught so many fish on drop shot by either dead sticking or just by taking it super slow you know i mean there's certain applications where you're going to speed it up a little bit but on a day like today you know we've had a couple tournaments that come through here you know me and my tva tvba buddies you know we uh we laid the smack down on them dude there was 15 boats we were out here we were doing our thing but it's stuff like that when it's happening every day or every couple of days the lake's going to get pressured it doesn't matter because no matter what part of the lake you're looking at there's going to be a lure thrown in it if you got real bass guys out here you know people like myself i don't mind going back and cleaning up after they you know already picked apart clean because guess what those fish that might have been finicky well i'm coming at them with an inflatable you know with a trolling motor i'm dead i'm damn near silent so i come up take my sweet time hell half the time they don't even know i'm freaking there until i'm right on top of them you know now that's not to say you're always going to catch something because it happens you know you get skunked i mean it happens dude it happens to the best of us you know tournament day for myself i mean i only caught you know i caught one decent one 
I farmed, you know, a seven to eight pounder, and then I farmed another five pounder. So it happens, you know, but don't be discouraged. Keep on getting out there, you know, and once again, drop shot, I always keep one in my arsenal. You know, if you look at my arsenal right now, I got a few, you know, I got a few setups. I have my shaky head, okay? I have my swim bait, you know, a little, little S waiver 168. I also have a weightless Ica. You know, weightless Ica is another deadly method, you know. And I'll go over that on my next video, guys. Um, it's deadly, purely. But we'll leave that for another date. So, once, I, once again, like I said, drop shot, take your sweet ass time, or don't. What do I know? I don't catch fish. But yeah, just have fun with it, guys. I mean, the whole point of fishing, when it comes to, for me anyways, is to learn, is to become a better angler, and to meet up with cool people. You know, I've met so many people on the lake that are just, that are just good heads, you know what I mean? Like, people that you'd want to kick it with, you know? And, end of the day, we're all here for the same reasons, so, might as well enjoy it, right? Okay guys, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go throw some lead around right now. Maybe I'll get something, maybe I won't, but hell, if I do, you guys will know about it, alright? Oh yeah, baby! That's right! That's right! Yeah, baby. That's two for the day, Bubba. Big old fucking pig right there. Hell yeah. That's right. So. When it comes down to it, drop shot might just be the ticket. If you're not getting anything on anything else, for me, even shaky head wasn't working, so I started throwing drop shot. Well, it works. I mean, it's my fallback. What can I say? All right, guys, let's get this little guy back in the water. Let's see what we can do here. I'd say she go about two. Hell yeah. That's right, Bubba. Get in there. Bassaholic, 760, but you already knew that. All right, guys. So the wind has picked up a little bit. It's getting hard to feel with my drop shot. Currently, I'm using a quarter ounce. But when the wind starts picking up and you're starting to get a little bit less sensitivity, a little less feel, don't be afraid to upsize your weight. So like I said, currently I'm using a quarter ounce weight, pencil weight, that is. Now, I'm going to upsize to a 3 8 A little bit bigger, you know, but uh, it kick ass. Now, right now, I'm going to use a Ventana drop shot weight by Team Davies. These guys make some kick ass weights. They make, they make a bunch of good tackle, but lately I've been on this kick with uh, with the Ventana drop shot weights. This one's a 3 8 ounce. Like I said, I'm stepping up in weight. But I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's got a rattle in there. It's a standard lead drop shot weight, close to a pencil weight, but it's got that rattle. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's it's deadly, you know. It wakes them up. It gives it that little bit of vibration combined with the presentation that I'm giving with them that it just, it makes them want to bite. Something about it. Give those guys, a, you know, a little scope out. Team Davies, they make some killer stuff. So, yeah. So now that I've tied back on, I'm going to sling this sucker out there. 
and see what I get. Much better. So not only do I improve my casting distance, but once that weight gets to the bottom, it's gonna peg there. It's not gonna get blown back towards me if I'm, if, you know, I'm fishing into the wind. It does a good job of holding it in place until I choose to move it. So, you know, scope it out, and give it a try. Upsize your weight, downsize your weight, you know, it all depends on wind conditions, current, stuff like that. So in this situation, wind picked up, it's a strong headwind, you know, or strong gusts, but a steady headwind. So this is when I'm gonna upsize. So we'll see what we get. I'm gonna just take it slow. I'm not trying to shake this thing like it's having a seizure. Just take your time. Don't feel pressure to get your lure back to you. I mean, personally, when I'm running a drop shot, sometimes it takes me two minutes to get my, you know, to get my, my setup back to me. It just depends. You know, sometimes I'll rip it a little faster, a little faster, not much. But sometimes I'll just take my sweet time. Just play with it, guys. Yeah, just have fun with it, you know? I mean, that's all I'm doing, man. If I don't catch anything, it happens, but it's a learning experience. You can never go wrong if you learn something. The day that you don't learn something is the day that it's no longer beneficial to you. So keep learning, keep improving, get out there and just give it your all every time you go out. Give it 110% no matter what. And worst case scenario, you learn. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Now we're talking, dude. Shake that fucking skunk off. You know? Decent little dinker. Good one. You know, I had to go to drop shot. Nothing else was working. So, hell, don't be ashamed of using drop shot. Still catches fish, right? Let's see this little release on this papa. Get in there. And she gone. 